Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Andrew Haley, and welcome to Wirecast Live. This is our fifth episode, I think, fifth or sixth. And we are basically here every Thursday at 2.30 on a Facebook page for Telestream Wirecast. Uh, that's 2.30 Pacific time. If there's another time or if you are a viewer from, you know, that, that something might uh, work for you at a different time, let us know that. I mean, we're not married to this exact spot, so we, we'd be happy to um, entertain the idea of throwing this on at other times or if there's a better time you think you would like to see this live. The idea being that we just get on, we talk with you guys, we interact, we take your comments, we'll throw those up on the screen in a little bit, and we cover topics related to live streaming or to Telestream or Wirecast or the broader live streaming community. So we're going to keep coming back to you every week, once a week, with a, anywhere from a half an hour to an hour broadcast, and we can usually take questions on the air. There's time for that, and it's a fun time. It's not supposed to be a super formal show. We don't usually have a, a ton of things to get through unless um, the, co the topic for that day is particularly complex. In the future, we're going to be pulling on some guests to interview for you. Uh, anything we think that might be useful to you guys or interesting. I'm really excited to do this every week. It's one of my favorite parts of my job, and I enjoy just getting on here, talking, and sharing some information. And then if you have stuff, I always learn things from you guys as well, things that I don't know about Facebook. Uh, we started this when we launched Facebook for Wirecast uh, uh, for 607, which was several, about a month or so ago. Uh, and it's been a really big response since. And so this has been a very good opportunity for us to reach out to you guys as Wirecast users or potential customers and talk about live streaming in general in a somewhat informal way. Normally I do webinars, we do those a couple times a month and those are usually bigger productions, they're much more focused on a certain topic material and we you know, go much more in depth and you have to be there at a certain time to watch it live or you, know, you watch it on demand later. We wanted something a little more informal and a little more consistent that we could do uh, as to do other material that may not warrant its own hour-long webinar. Now, the topic we're going to cover today may, in fact, be worthy of that. Uh, so you'll see. We're going to go over for today. We're going to talk about some live streaming equipment, particularly focusing on capture cards, which I know is a big question for a lot of you. And anyone who's looking at Wirecast or a software-based encoding system or live streaming system, you're almost always going to encounter that as something you need to uh, deal with or investigate. And that can be a complex topic. So hopefully I'll be able to take you through a few of the manufacturers that we work with and that are um, out there for live streaming equipment and talk about a little bit about what capture cards are, what they do, and what you can look for in them. And then we'll also give you a little tour today of our live streaming setup here. It's a, we're in a green screen studio. You'll see that shortly, uh, but we'll do the studio tour at the end and then we can take some time for some questions. So why don't I dive right into my topics for today and we'll talk about the capture cards. I've got some slides here. Uh, they're very basic just to help us guide the discussion. But uh, if you have a question or a comment, just post it on the comments section. We'll throw those up in a little bit uh, whenever um, you know some are coming in and we can take those. All right, so let's talk first about AJA. AJA is one of our favorite manufacturers. They are local. They're neighbors to us. Literally, Telestream headquarters and AJA headquarters are about five minutes apart in the foothills of, of California um, in Nevada City and Grass Valley. So uh, very fun, uh, local. We know a lot of the people who work there, and we do enjoy working with them. They're a great company. They make great products and great quality cards. Uh, they usually have higher-end equipment for and broadcasters and people willing to spend the money to um, get the best that they can. And I, I highly recommend their cards if that's in your price bracket. And one of the ones, like for example, that I could talk about today, and we'll probably be implementing in our studio here, is uh, this AJA IO 4K. And this is a external capture card. And it's basically a box that has their um, all of these connections on the back. And it has you know, everything from uh, the SDI inputs to HDMI in and out and SDI in and out. And it all comes down to a Thunderbolt port, which can then get connected to your Mac or Windows computer. And what's great about this is it's a four input card and it can you know, basically take up to four cameras, 1080i cameras in, or it can even push out of Wirecast recently. So that is something that's very exciting. This, because you are paying for a four input card inside a very nice, 
very uh, rugged housing. I mean, this is going to run you about $2,000. I'm not sure of the exact price. And don't quote me on any of these prices. I'm not the manufacturer of these cards. You're going to have to refer to their websites or their pricing uh, lists to get exact prices. But I can give you ballpark, hopefully. Uh, so AJA is a good manufacturer, and we do work with their cards. We love their cards and their neighbors. So we always uh, love to um, promote their stuff. Now, another manufacturer that you've probably heard of, I don't have one of their cards here. We are testing these over in our lab. Uh, and so, you know, I don't really have one to show you visually, but Avermedia is a very well-known uh, capture card manufacturer. And they are... Um, primarily focused on game capture. They do a lot of gaming cards, and they work a lot with our um, our uh, uh, game show product, which is specifically for streaming your video games to Twitch or to YouTube gaming. And so I highly recommend their cards as well. Very good stuff, but they don't all work with Wirecast or with uh, game show. So be aware of which ones work. Um, and this is true for all of these manufacturers. Definitely check that the card's going to work not only with your computer, but with the software you're using as well. And you can usually find information about that either from the manufacturer of the card or from our website if it works if you're looking to make it work with some of our software. So we're pretty on the ball with what's working and what doesn't, and we're pretty open and upfront if we haven't tested it ourselves. So Avermedia is another good one, uh, and I again just don't have a, a physical model to show you. Black Magic Design. Most of you have probably heard of this, them and their, their company. They're a very large company, one of the largest manufacturers of capture cards and ingestion cards in the world. And they're based out of Australia. They uh, make cards like uh, this one, the Intensity Extreme. Uh, we also have the Intensity Pro. Both of those we are actually using in our broadcast right now because those we had them on hand. And when we threw together this live streaming setup, those are what we could you know, uh, have easily to hand and put together. But I'm also using several other cards as well, and I could show you those on the tour. Uh, the nice thing about the Black Magics is they are also cross-platform compatible. Somebody like Avermedia may not work with the Mac. Uh, AJAs should all be cross-platform, uh, whether you're Mac or PC. And Black Magic also cross-platform should be compatible the drivers with both Windows computers and Mac computers. So that's very convenient. Also, Black Magic probably makes more Thunderbolt cards, which are great for Mac users, uh, than any other manufacturer. So uh, they are generally one of the first places you would look if you are a Mac user and you use Wirecast, which is another thing that, you know, one of the reasons you may have come to Wirecast because Wirecast is only is one of the only cross-platform softwares and streaming softwares, and I think it's the best one for the Mac. Uh, and so uh, on PC, you'll find a lot of other um, com competitors on there, but on Mac, you're not going to find too much else besides Wirecast, and I don't think you find anything better anyway. So uh, hopefully that will be... Um, Black Magic might be something you'd be looking at in particular. Uh, as far as their cards go, I don't necessarily have one that I recommend over others. Uh, the one thing you want to watch out with Black Magic cards is not all of them will do new frame rates. You need to make sure that the frame rates that your camera is using are supported by the card. So if the camera is doing a 60p frame rate, then you need to make sure that your capture card will do that as well. Uh, I believe these older intensity extremes and so forth don't necessarily use or can accept a 1080 60p ingestion. And so just, again, make sure all the components in your workflow work together. So when you are using a capture card or thinking about purchasing one, you are going to want to check those specs. And can your camera manufacturers and even card manufacturers to a certain extent can uh, don't always put that information right up front. It can be kind of hard to find, so you may need to track it down a little bit and make sure it's going to work. And then we usually suggest buy the card or see if you can, you know, what the return policy is in case you it's not going to work for you and you can return it. So save your receipts, do some testing. You know, you may need to try one or two other cards before you find the right one that's going to work for your setup and your equipment. All right, so that's Blackmagic Design. Let's talk about Bluefish. Again, I don't have a model on hand. These are higher-end cards. They like to do uh, uncompressed video. They're very much into uh, the very high-end, you know, testing systems and things like that. Typically, you don't find these in a standard user um, consumer's computer just because the price is so high. And um, these these cards can be um, you know, more for the professional realm. But if you're a Bluefish user, from what I hear, I've never used one of these cards. I hear they're great. And uh, you know, 
and I, I haven't heard anything but you know good things about them. So uh, leave a comment if you know anything or have some suggestions about bluefish cards. We do have one that we've tested with Wirecast, and I believe it worked great. So um, that's all I can say about bluefish, having less experience with them. Epifan is another common manufacturer. Uh, they really specialize in uh, cards that work with computer sources. Um, they're, they make what are called their frame grabbers, frame grabber cards. So they, they're very good at grabbing signals or video signals from uh, video monitors, uh, equipment. I'll just bring this up to the camera so you can see. This is their AVIO card. This is the one that we are currently using, I think, to capture my desktop screen. So the words behind me, this my slide is coming from my computer, and that is being uh, captured through an Epifan card. So it's great for capturing computer signals, uh, computer monitors, and they also make you know just good cards in general. Uh, very well manufactured. I believe they're based out of Canada and the US. Uh, and so um, you know I, I've only they tend to be driverless or their drivers aren't high. Um, you don't need to usually download s um, proprietary drivers and that's actually a good point with Blackmagic Design and with AJA some of those other manufacturers you need to make sure you download the drivers directly from the manufacturer whereas with cards like you know the Epifan you don't necessarily do that they'll use the drivers on your Mac or Windows computer these are also cross-platform they work with Mac or Windows uh, they tend to run in the three to six hundred dollar range I believe uh, and they are, um, you know, I really like them. The drawback of using a card that's just a plug and play card is you don't necessarily have all the control. You won't have the ins and outs. With AJ and Blackmagic, because you're downloading their proprietary drivers, we can push in and out of, of Wirecast with their cards. We can't do that with generic cards that use generic drivers. So you're not having to install um, custom software, but there are, you know, you don't always get the benefits when it's been built from the ground up. So cost benefit. All right, so that's Epifan. Uh, the AVIO is the one that I showed you here, but uh, they have a lot of other cards. You can check them out. Another company that we like a lot is Magewell. They're based out of China, and they make some great cards uh, that are also cross-platform. Uh, this works for the Mac and Windows. This is called the XI100 USB HDMI. And uh, it is a, a great little capture card. It's about $300, I think. And it will, it takes a single HDMI source and converts it to USB 3, which you can bring into your computer. So you can hook up a great camera. I think it takes high frame rates as well. Uh, so we like this. And it's a plug and play. So you don't need to download uh, proprietary drivers. However, not all mage wells will work with Mac. Uh, you need to check with the manufacturer's website. I believe, um, you know, there's only a certain subset of their cards that work for Mac, Windows, and Linux. Whereas some of their other cards, or most of their other cards, may just be Windows only, or Linux and Windows only. So check that out as well. But good company and a good option for you. You might want to consider them if you are um, on a computer with just USB ports or something like that. Uh, let's see, who else do we have? Matrox. I don't have one of their cards on hand to show either. Those are in our testing lab at the moment. But uh, Matrox is a company we've worked with for a long time here at Telestream, and we do like their cards. They're primarily focused on the Windows um, market, and they don't really make cards for the Mac anymore. They, I think they had one that they discontinued. And the one that we probably recommend and sell the most, or you know, not sell, but uh, hear of customers buying the most, is the Matrox VS4 card. And that is their four input SDI card for, the win for Windows. And what's nice about that is that was the only card with Wirecast that worked with ISO recording. So they designed that card uh, with some uh, compression hardware on it that so that you could actually plug in four cameras to that card and record all four of those inputs into separate isolated files. So you'd have clean original source files of those cameras as well as still be able to use them in Wirecast for switching and live streaming uh, to, to put out um, your own broadcast. So you'd have a backup of individual backup of every camera that you plugged into that card as well as being able to use all that for your live production, which was amazing. Um, of course, you needed a very fast hard drive to record all those files, and you um, you weren't necessarily uh, you can't do an output of that card. It didn't have the same inputs outputs capabilities that we do with Blackmagic or with AJA. So that's Matrox, uh, another good company. I think they're based out of Canada as well. 
Vario Systems used to be Osprey. They made the Os they still actually kept the Osprey name for their cards. Um, that, sorry, so Vario Systems didn't used to be Osprey. They bought Osprey cards, and they still put them out. And the Osprey cards, by all accounts, are still very good, and uh, they're primarily Windows only. I don't believe they'll work with Mac. And they've put out some more cards recently that I actually we want to get our hands on and do some testing with. We've tested some of the older models, but I don't think we've done anything recently with them. If you have some comments on them, please leave them in the comments section, and we can take those. Uh, other than that, I don't have too much to um, say about them, except that they have a lot of inputs and capabilities, and uh, they tended to run a little bit higher than other cards in the price range. Comments. So, Andy, thanks for throwing that up, Lucas. Uh, what's your solution to a wireless streaming over Wi-Fi? Well, Andy, stay tight. I'm actually going to show you something on that note, so we'll talk about that in a second. And then, Michael, I have two of the Blackmagic Intensity Pros, which work excellently with Wirecast. Yeah, the Intensity Pros are great, and they're internal cards. They don't cost that much, and they'll even give you an input and an output, as well as some of the other connections. So one of the nice things about Blackmagic cards is they offer both SD and... HD connections, so you can bring in older sources if you need to. Uh, great, thanks for the comment. Okay, I'm going to take a quick sip of water before we go to our next manufacturer, which is which is Yuan. Yuan is another company based out of China. They just sent us a big box of cards to test. We're very excited, and we love those cards as well. I don't have a ton of experience. I don't have one on hand to show you, but they are being tested in our lab. And uh, by all accounts, great cards for the Windows um, platform. So, m you know, feel free to check out their cards. They, um, you know, I can't say with 100% certainty yet that they are totally approved and as working with Wirecast, uh, but we have approved at least one of their cards in the past, and they do make some great models, and I think they have a very good price range as well. So uh, feel free, again, if you do have a Yuan, leave a comment on it. Love to hear more about that card, uh, but they are listed on our website um, in the manufacturer support section or and, and with at least one of their cards being tested by us. And I think they just came out with a whole bunch of new models as well. A lot of these companies and these manufacturers are updating their card lines because cameras have gotten better. Uh, 4K has come along, new formats, new standards by the, uh, the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers, which set the data rates and speeds for a lot of those cables and uh, for that H those signals that come through them that the cards have to respect and recognize and then convert into video signals that your, um, or into data signals that your computer and software can recognize. So uh, that's a mouthful, but basically it just means that a lot has changed in the last few years. And so a lot of these older cards that have been around since 2010, 11, and 12 are needing to get upgraded to meet the new specs and, the, and be able to handle those higher definition signals coming through from cameras. So um, as, as usual in the tech world, uh, things are changing quickly. So uh, older cards that you might be able to get cheaper or more affordably may not work with a new camera. You need to make sure that that's all going to match. Uh, as far as 4K support goes, we are, I believe, in the process of testing new 4K cards. It's really something that's just beginning to find its legs. It, I don't think it's going to be in streaming anytime soon. I mean, the the average bandwidth in the U.S. is still like 1.5 megabits per second, which is nowhere near what you need for a 4K signal or 4K streaming. So 1080 is easily still high enough for most of America. In fact, it's too high. And so uh, you probably won't see 4K streaming all that soon. Um, but, you know, next 5, 10 years, there's probably a lot more opportunity for that. But starting with something like a 4K camera into Wirecast, allows you some flexibility because you get such a huge frame rate that um, you can actually zoom in on that picture and get one or two or three camera angles out of a single camera. Uh, and that can be a really a big advantage because now you almost got uh, three cameras for the price of one. So uh, it's a good idea and that's why we would be testing those types of cameras and those types of cards. So stay tuned for more information on that um, as, we, as we have it coming. All right, so that kind of covers I think the manufacturer run of the cards that are we have currently listed on our website. There is something else I want to mention, which is uh, sometimes you may want to use an internal card, or you, you have a laptop, or you have a Mac, or something that doesn't have internal slots 
for cards that you want to use. Uh, so this is getting a little bit into the um, weeds with capture cards, but I figured we should cover this because it's something you might want to know. So the first is uh, cards, as you know, probably come in two flavors mostly. They come in what are called external, which really go into a, a cable. They, they sit in their own box and they sit next to your computer on your desk or next to your laptop. And then really they convert the camera signal into a USB, which I'll hold up there, USB or a Thunderbolt cable, which then plugs into your computer. So external cards are really great for using with laptops or with Macs, which don't have internal slots anymore. Uh, now, there are other types of cards which are called internals, and that would be the example I showed today here was the Intensity Pro. And I don't think I actually have the card here. I don't. Um, it's installed over there, so we can look at that. But basically, they would come in a bag like this to protect them from static electricity. They have no skeleton, no armor. There's no external housing around them. And you install these inside your desktop PC or into... Um, uh, a slot that is usually in the back of your computer for expanding components like graphics cards or capture cards and things like that. And the advantage of this is that usually these cards, the internal cards, can handle, you know, can come in more flavors. They can handle one or two or three or four card um, cameras uh, at a time. Whereas the externals usually don't. I mean, the AJI I showed you is a little bit of a rare exception. They they took their internal card and built a box around it. Uh, the you know guys like this little Magewell are not going to take three cameras. They're just going to take one, and so that's true of most of the external cards. Now you can, however, turn an internal card into an external card by just bringing your own box. That's where you would get something like a, a Thunderbolt enclosure or a USB enclosure. And what you do is you open this and you install an internal card in this open slot in the back. And now you have access to all of those uh, connections that the internal card offers you. And you've provided power and uh, an enclosure and basically created your own expansion slot and then converted it all into a little USB or Thunderbolt cable that comes out the back. And this has to sit, again, next to your computer, your laptop on your desk, but you now can maybe bring in one, two, three, or four cameras depending on which card you installed. The disadvantage of this is that it gets expensive, right? So this box alone, I think, costs five to seven hundred dollars. And then you also would want to buy a card that's going to bring in two, three, or four cameras. And the more cameras a card can bring in, the more expensive it will be. So that's why when I showed you this AJA, this guy, uh, that's why it costs $2,000, because you're getting uh, a very nice four-camera card, as well as all the machining and all the, um, the construction that they had to do to build the housing and all the lights and things on th that's, that uh, they had to install on the front. There's also volume control, I believe. There's a headphone jack. I mean, they put all these awesome, cool components in here, but you're going to pay for that. So uh, just keep that in mind. If you do want to use an internal card with your laptop, you can do it. But you will, you know, have to build your own enclosure, and that can take time and money. All right, so that's my spiel on cards, and let's take some comments here while we're looking. I'm just going to minimize my desktop here so you can see my screen here. Okay, so uh, Ulysses, your um, that was the comment you left about your two black magics. That's great, and. Let's see, what do I need this from what do I need to record my stream from my Mac to a PC? Uh, from a Mac to a PC with Premiere Pro. So I'm assuming you're editing on Premiere on your PC and you want to bring your desktop screen into your Mac for streaming in Wirecast. Is that right? Or vice versa? You want to go from the Mac where you're editing in Premiere and then take your whole screen over to your PC where you want to stream it. Uh, that can be done pretty simply with something like an Epifan. So you could plug the Epifan into the Mac or the Windows machine and then uh, take the display out of your graphics card of whichever computer you want to show and pull it in and then Wirecast will grab that and uh, stream it out. So that's pretty easy. And then, Andre, I haven't forgotten about your question. What's the solution uh, for wirelessly streaming over Wi-Fi? Well, there's a lot of other 
solutions for that. And it really depends on what you want to use. But I think the simplest one is uh, an app that we make called, if you're using Wirecast, uh, called Wirecast Cam. And I've got an iPad here that I've got loaded, I've loaded Wirecast Cam on. And uh, you're going to see, it's going to look a little funny because uh, the green in the background there is going to get um, caught in there. But basically, uh, the iPad is running our app on it. And we are um, streaming to it uh, to our, our Wirecast machine over Wi-Fi. So all I have to do is hit the little red record button, and that starts a stream over the Wi-Fi. And if you have a good a network and not a lot of dropping or latency or anything like that, then you can get a very affordable free wireless camera. So why don't we switch to that, and I'll show you. So there it is. So this is our... Wirecast cam, you can see there's my desk and I'm going to do that. And I think this might be a fun time to give you guys a studio tour of how we do this in our studio. So looking at it from how I see things, I'm going to take you on a tour here. So hopefully my camera work won't be too bad. So this is my laptop where I do, you know, I can, I can read comments on the Facebook stream. And then this is the display I use for all of my software demos. So if I wanted to pull up a demo of, say, Wirecast or ScreenFlow, I can pull that over to the big screen here. And I can give a demo of what, you know, how to use the software. Or I can run slides. I can do whatever. And this screen is being captured and then sent out of my computer through a Thunderbolt cable and out of a Blackmagic Intensity shuttle. And from there, it goes and gets captured into our, our main broadcast machine, which is a Mac Pro sitting on the desk right there. All right, so the camera is mounted, is right here. This is the Sony, um, I think it's in the NGX. I forget the exact model, but it's been uh, used for quite a while. It's probably almost ready to be retired. Uh, we'll see, but it's still doing a good job. I don't want to knock it. We have a lighting box here, which helps light me. Uh, we also threw this uh, light down here just to give some extra lighting to my eyes and to hopefully uh, mitigate some of the shadows. And then turning around here, you can see this is the uh, this is the green screen with the, the, the chair. And I'll actually probably be replacing that chair soon because it's a swivel chair and I can't help but like rotate myself while I'm sitting in it and it looks kind of silly. But that's one of the things. And then you can see we've lit the green screen with uh, some LED 500s from a grid above. And that's really for lighting the green screen. And then these extra lights just provide some lighting for my face. All right. And then over here on a table, which um, again, it's a bit messy in here, but we've had to set all this up. A lot of this is going to get moved and is still in, is actually in the process of being moved, is our studio setup. And here are our studio operators. Hello. That's Lucas and Alexis. And they are helping with the broadcast right now. So this is the broadcast where Lucas can use Wirecast to help stream everything out and switch camera angles and throw the Facebook comments on, which you can see right there. He grabs that from the Facebook feed. We also have a Mackie, an old Mackie switch um, mixer here. It's, uh, it's old, but it's good. It's been working for us. And then next, you can see this is the external enclosure I was talking about. We actually have an Intensity Pro in here, which is hooked up to the Mac. And this captures the camera. So I was actually wrong on that. The, uh, the output of the shuttle over there goes over to our Epifan AVIO, which is right there. All right, and that's kind of it for our messy studio where we do all this. Bye. See you guys. Hopefully, uh, that was a useful tour. Uh, we actually plan on moving everything. We have a little control room there that we'll be setting up. It's uh, still in under construction at the moment. And then we have a bunch of foam and things like that. We have a, a whisper booth, which I didn't really talk about. We do that. We use that for voiceovers. And uh, it's a quiet place where you can record a lot of the stuff that we put online or we do software demos or record scripts. And then up there, you can see some sound foam that still needs to get hung. So 
again, very much still under construction, but it is a very nice setup. We feel really lucky to be able to use it and, uh, you know, for these broadcasts and for our content production. I think a lot of teams out there don't have uh, as much, have a studio like this. So we, we feel very fortunate to be able to use this for our broadcasts for you guys. So what I'm going to do is pull up a some comments here so I can see what you guys are talking about. If you want to take, we want to ask some questions or if there's some other things that I didn't cover that you still want to talk about, I'd be happy to take those now. And let me pull those up real fast. And Lucas can throw those on the screen, which actually they're big enough for me to read. Uh, one thing I didn't show you was that I can actually see the final output. We project that on the wall behind. Uh, so actually I can show you that real fast. Lucas, you want to switch back? It's going to get a little mirrored, but up there, you can't really see it, but there is a projector and it shows what shows me what you see. So I, when I'm looking above the camera, I'm usually looking at the final output uh, so I can at least see how things look and I know what's on screen at what time. So I'm going to place that back down. Okay. Uh, so let's see. I don't see too many new comments. So if you don't have any questions, um, that's okay. We can wrap it up for today. We just wanted to talk about uh, some of the capture cards that you might be using and some of the, uh, you know, some of the manufacturers out there. I could show you on our website real fast where you can go to get the latest information on the capture cards that we use. So why don't I pull that up? You go to our products, go to Wirecast, and you can click on uh, the features page. And here's where it goes over the workflow from capturing to producing to streaming. And in the capturing area, it talks about the different types of devices you can capture in Wirecast. And as we mentioned, capture cards are one of those categories. You click on the learn more or read and many more link right here then that takes you to this chart, which is a chart or graph of the capture cards that our team has tested, as well as the ones that manufacturers have tested, but we haven't had a chance to look at ourselves. And this is actually getting updated as we speak, so there should be a lot of changes to this, you'll see, but um, this is a good place to go to look to get a first idea of things that we've tested and what operating system we've tested them on, and what version of Wirecast they should work with, or what version of Wirecast we tested them with. This link, by the way, is at www.telestream.net slash Wirecast slash devices dot HDM hashtag capture. So that's a bit of a mouthful. I usually just bookmark it. Brendan, looking forward to the Wirecast update where we can broadcast 360-degree VR. Me too. <laughs> can I repeat how my stream from my iPad works? So, Christian, uh, real quick, we have a free app that you can download. Uh, and actually, I'm just going to take you to the store. That's probably the best way to do this. Why don't we go back to capture? And if you actually go to the features page, so telestream.net slash wirecast slash features.htm, and you click on, and you see under the capture section here, you, look, you can see a link to our Wirecast Cam app. This app turns your iPhone, iPad, or iOS device into a wireless camera. And it makes it very easy to stream from that device's camera and audio over your Wi-Fi network directly into Wirecast. And you can use the QR code here to get taken to the App Store where you can download it. As long as you have a qualifying iPad or your iOS device, you can use this app to get a very affordable and low-cost 
Wi-Fi camera or wireless camera that Wirecast instantly recognizes. And most people you know, that we talk to have access to an iPad or access to um, an iPhone or something they can use if they need it. And we find this is a really simple way to bring, you know, get your camera mobile. Now, if you want to get something more professional, like we switch from, and I'm streaming now on this iPad, this has got Wirecast Cam and it's connected over our network to, uh, to there. And so if we switch here so I can show you this camera here, uh, this, uh, I gotta get my camera angle here. This is our Sony uh, and it has interchangeable lenses. If you wanna get a nicer camera like this, uh, and turn it into a Wi-Fi camera, you want to get away from the HDMI, the tyranny of the cable, uh, then you will need to get an adapter, a wireless or Wi-Fi um, encoder. And a good company that makes those that I know of, that we work with, is Teradek. They will make you a box that you can buy for several hundred bucks, and uh, you can It'll take an HDMI and it'll hook right on the camera, take an HDMI out, and it can stream it wirelessly. Um, it's just a little more expensive, um, and but you can get it to work with nicer cameras or the expensive HD, HDMI cameras that you might want to use. So those are kind of your options there. What's the name of the iPad holder? Uh, this is, good question, this is actually uh, called Iographer. This is a great uh, little company that makes a really nifty case that fits on your any iPad you, or iOS device. You just need to buy the right one for the device you're using. Uh, great company and doesn't cost much. I think it's about fifty dollars. And they'll s they even have um, extensions like this light. They have lenses you can buy. They've got all kinds of stuff. You can buy a whole kit for a few hundred bucks, and they'll basically trick you out and turn you into a um, a videographer. So they're a great company uh, that makes extensions and cases for iPads for video. What uh, What's the external lens and ring on your iPad? Okay, so that answers the same questions. Iographer, you can go to iographer.com uh, and check them out. Another one to check out is Padcaster. They're another good company. They make uh, uh, another type of uh, kit as well, so both of them are good. Iographer is great. We like their stuff. They um, sent us a demo case and I use that a lot for demos and things like that. Good questions, you guys. All right, well, I think that about wraps it up, unless you have any other questions today, guys. I hope this was helpful. Can you stream, looks like I missed yours, Matt. Can you stream from a GoPro to a Wirecast? To Wirecast? Uh, not directly. Uh, wi GoPro streams to their phone app basically and i think it only streams in 640 by 480 it doesn't do a full hd stream that was true at least last time i checked that may have changed but for now uh no you can't go directly from gopro you will need to bounce your gopro stream off of a another server or something like that and then pull it into wirecast through your uh through the web stream pro uh plugin or something like that so um there are some workarounds you might try search around for GoPro plus Wirecast or do it yourself, DIY, you know, streaming servers, and you might find some people who are able to show you how to do that. Any chance about Android phones as external cameras? Yeah, that's definitely on our roadmap, but I don't have a date or a time as to when that would be ready. It's something that uh, we hope will we'll get out there, but I don't have any exact definite news on when it would be released. But for now, Wirecast Cam is solely a, an iOS application. DJI Osmo to Wirecast. I'm not familiar with that. So, sorry, Andre. All right, you guys, I think that's all for today. We'll see you next time, next Thursday, 2.30 p.m. Pacific time. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope this was helpful. See you later. Mm -hmm.